Which majors can you take in a biomedical master's program? Let's have a look. As if biomedical science wasn't specific enough already, there's actually deeper detail you can go into when choosing a major to graduate in biomedical science in your master program or even your PhD program. In general, you can categorize these majors within a biomedical master's program as follows. One, basic and translational research with a lot of more options to focus or specialize in and we'll discuss that a bit later in this video. Two, clinical research. Three, management, education and communication. So number two, the clinical research part is a field where many biomedical scientists end up in. This focus typically trains you to end up in anything around clinical trials and training you to work either as a clinical trial assistant, a clinical research associate, a clinical trial supply chain manager, a clinical trial coordinator or manager. If you don't have any clue what I'm talking about when I'm saying clinical research or clinical trials, I've put some links in the description below for you guys. First one would be a video on what clinical trials are. And the second link would be to a specific YouTube channel all around clinical trial jobs. So check that out after this video. The third major is management, education and communication. So a focus on management typically sets you up with some skills you can use in industry, pharmaceutical companies, biotech companies, biomedical companies to like lead a small team of people or perhaps even some entrepreneurship and some skills you can learn to set up your own business later on. But do note that setting up your own business is very, very hard, specific, not for everyone. In case of education, of course, it's obvious it's to become a teacher. But do note that you cannot teach at universities as a professor because that requires a doctoral degree, so you need a PhD level for that. And then the word communication actually is applicable to both management and education because you need good communication skills to be a good manager or be a good teacher, of course. And generally speaking, if you have those communication skills, you can also get into like science communication. And if you have good writing skills, then maybe you can go for like scientific journaling or being an editor is for scientific journals or science communication in general. Another pro tip for you guys is to make sure you check out multiple master programs of different universities that you're interested in because the program of the masters can differ a lot and it can be ranked according to those three majors I just listed or maybe the university is completely research focused only and you can major in the different fields that I will mention just now in the rest of this video. Okay, now let's go over the biggest chunk of options and that's within the research field, the basic translational research field where you can choose from the following options. So we have nutrition, metabolism and hormones. All about food, what your body does with that food, how the food affects your body and the hormones that get secreted with that, like uh, insulin, leptin for your sugar and fat metabolism. Second, neuroscience, all about the brain. Third is stem cells, tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. So this involves like growing tissues or even whole organs within a lab for instance. Fourth, nuclear medicine, medical radiation and medical imaging. X-ray scanners, PET scans, MRIs, uh, stuff like that. Fifth would be medical genetics, all about like performing genetic tests, uh, how to improve diagnostic tests for parents who would like to have their DNA checked before they have children, for instance, stuff like that. Sixth, immunology and infection, all about the immune system and how it fights off pathogens like bacteria, fungi, viruses, even parasites, for instance. Very cool major, I did that one. Seven, bioinformatics and systems biology. Now this is a very recent field and it actually contains like a general approach on how systems work and it involves a lot of bioinformatics and a lot of data, a lot of the omics, genomics, proteomics, transcriptomics, metabolomics, and it tries to integrate that to build like a system like from networks within cellular pathways and tries to build uh, an image of how all that functions. It involves a lot of data processing. Eight, oncology, cancer. Yeah, so this speaks for itself, of course. Nine, pharmacology, all about drug interactions, what the body does to the drug and what the drug does to the body. 
and then physiology. This could be general physiology on, or electrophysiology, for instance, more specifically like how cells communicate with one another through action potentials, so electrically or chemically with neurotransmission or even gap junctions or stuff like that. And because we're biomedical, we're operating in the medical field, you can also categorize like your research areas according to medical specialties. As such, you can categorize along a specific medical field like hematology, cardiology, uh, rheumatology, embryology, gastroenterology, nephrology, pulmonary diseases, infectiology, and even things like sports medicine, movement and exercise, or public health. Another thing I want to mention, guys, is that research areas can often be overlapping and multidisciplinary. And this is stuff you can encounter during your thesis in your master program. So let me give you an example, like in my case back in the day, my project was involving nanobodies in a cancer context, meaning that the nanobody part is immunology based and cancer is oncology. So there's a multidisciplinary approach there. So do take that into consideration that you will work multidisciplinary in your thesis in master program. And to end this video, I wanna give some examples of very specific majors you can take at several universities. For instance, like forensics. But then there's also bioelectronics and nanotechnology, environmental health, tropical diseases and precision medicine. And also don't forget that in many master programs you have the option to take elective courses as well. So having that freedom allows you to take maybe anything going from even philosophy to more specific pharmaceutical stuff like drug discovery or medicinal chemistry. If you thought this video was informative, please give it a thumbs up, share it, like it, and make sure to subscribe for future videos and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.